Okay, good evening, everyone. Tonight, Thursday, February 16th, 2023, our regularly scheduled Board of Selectmen's meeting. I call the meeting to order at actually it's about 12 or uh, 7.01. And I ask that we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, our next thing would be additions and or changes to the agenda. Uh, I don't know of any. Does anybody have anything or not? Okay. Uh, next would be our public comment. Uh, this is the section of the agenda is reserved for people in attendance who wish to briefly address the board. The board requests that comments be initiated to three minutes or less. Uh, people wishing to comment should type comment and your name in the chat box and you will be recognized. Uh, if it's about areas that we've already had numerous comments about, I would hope that this would be for new information, not just the same information. So I know we have uh, Mr. Tomaleri. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Kevin Tulamary, 110 Kinney Road. And I apologize for my video. I'm in my car and traveling tonight. But I wanted to be here and uh, just read a section of the town charter to the Board of Selectmen. This is Chapter 11, Code of Ethics, Section 1102, Purpose. Quote, public office is a public trust. The trust of the public is essential for government to function effectively. Policy developed by government officials and employees affects every citizen of the town, and it must be based upon honest and fair deliberations and decisions. This process must be free from threats, favoritism, undue influence, and all forms of impropriety so that the confidence of the public is not eroded. By enacting this code, the town seeks to avoid any loss of trust and to maintain and increase the confidence of our citizens in the integrity, fairness, and transparency of their government, end quote. At the November 17th, 2022 Board of Selectmen meeting, you publicly discussed putting pressure on the independently elected officials of the Planning and Zoning Commission in an effort to block the scenic road designation for Kinney Road. Chairman Larson, you stated the need that Hebron boards are, quote, all heading our ships in the same direction, end quote, and that you were concerned, quote, we're not all on the same page, end quote. The, the actions of the Board of Selectmen to influence the Planning and Zoning Commission and their subsequent denial of a legal request that has, quote, satisfied all requirements does not reflect the public trust or honest and fair deliberations and decisions. You have used your positions to leverage undue influence against the people you are sworn to represent. Your efforts lack the integrity, fairness, and transparency you are bound to in the code of ethics established by the town charter. You have not acted in good faith, and I withdraw my offer to serve on any committee associated with the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Okay. I feel as if I must respond. Uh, I, for one, nor anybody else that I know have, of, has had any communications literally for weeks, if not months, with anybody on planning and zoning. So I almost take that as an act of slander. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, next, please. I don't Anyone see else? any other come. I don't see anyone else at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next section will be our appointments and resignations. I take that back. Terry McManus has um, indicated oh. he'd like to make a public comment. Okay, uh, Terry. 
Uh, as you, Dan, I feel like I should respond um, to what I just heard. It, it's disarming. I heard it the other night also. I was confused as to where it was coming from. All I can say is that by being at attendance on a number of different board meetings, I have not seen any of the, anything that made me distrust anyone. I've disagreed with a lot of people, but I've enjoyed the fact that I have people in this community that are earnest in their efforts to try and guide the town of Hebron forward. And Dan, I just want to say I support you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, moving on, we have uh, a, a, yeah, look at that. A commission on aging appointment. Uh, we have an email from Joe Souza uh, requesting her interest in being appointed to the commission on aging. Uh, Joe, are you here? Is Joe with us tonight or no? Okay, Andy, did you want to say anything on this? Yeah, so she's reached out. She has attended a meeting. Um, she's called the office uh, after that and uh, still uh, wishes to be appointed. So I think um, she's a good fit. She's got a letter in there, and I think the board should move forward. Okay. Well, I'll make the motion. <clears throat> Excuse me. Move the Hebron Board of Selectmen appoint Joe Souza as a regular member of the Commission on Aging with a term to run until December 2026. Uh, any further discussion? Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Mark? I thought he was out there, but um, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Uh, Gail? Gail Richman, aye. And myself, aye. Uh, our next would be the Douglas Library of Hebron Board of Trustees appointments. Uh, attached, uh, ugh, excuse me, attached is correspondence from the Douglas Library of Hebron Association recommending Ann Danaher and Margaret Clifton to fill two vacant association positions on the Douglas Library Board of Trustees. Uh, Move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen appoint Ann Danaher and Margaret Clifton to the two vacant association positions on the uh, Douglas Library Board of Trustees, each for a term to run until December 2026. Did you want to say anything about that, uh, Gail? Yes, um, I don't know Meg. So, Meg, I'm sorry I can't speak out about you, but I do know Ann, and I think she's going to be a big asset to, to our board. So I'm looking forward to having her serve with us. Okay, great. And Meg, is that you? It is. Thank you. I see a smile. Uh, you want to just say anything about yourself, or? Sure. Yeah. So I just recently joined the Douglas uh, Library Association, and then I attended um, the uh, Board of Trustees meeting uh, briefly on uh, on Monday night. But you know, I've I've lived in town since 2007. An avid supporter of the library. I go there. I take my kids there. Um, I teach English at the high school in town. So I'm you know huge supporter of everything that libraries stand for. And I love the library in our town, and I just want to make sure that I'm able to do everything to keep it as awesome as it is and make sure that we're able to provide those kind of services to the community. Thank you. Did anybody want to ask anything or? Yes, please. Um, Mr. Chair, if I would, um, I can speak for Meg. Um, I've had the pleasure to get to know Meg over the past several years. Um, through various meetings and different um, activities and group events. Um, she is a little modest. She's an exceptional educator. She's uh, remarkably dedicated to building thoughtful, discerning leaders um, for a, a global world that our students and children should be prepared to enter when they graduate. Um, she's deeply committed to um the library's values what it stands for um a, you know a space for um expression of ideas 
Um, and so I think that she's a wonderful fit for this role. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, hearing no more discussion, all in favor of the two uh, appointees, please signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Mark? whatever, he's not responding. Uh, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Gail? Gail Richmond, aye. And myself, aye. Thank you very, very much for your wanting to serve. Our next thing is our town manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna try to go through this quickly to keep on task here. So of course, we've been very busy putting the budget together for the town side um, that we're gonna be presenting on March 2nd. We work on it every day. Today was no different. Uh, so it's definitely going in the right direction. So we'll just continue to keep plugging away on that. We've been busy and we hired a new assistant town clerk. If, if I may interrupt, I apologize, Ann. I didn't realize that that was you out there if you're still there. Uh, without the names, I, I wasn't sure who that lady was. So somebody let her know. I apologize. I am still I am still here. No problem. Would Would you like Meg and I to drop off or stay for the rest oh, of the meeting? You're more than welcome to stay. Okay. We it's love a lot of company. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. I apologize, Andy. That's quite all right. Uh, it's kind of hard when you have the agenda up there, and then when Donna takes down, you can actually see people. I have the same situation in my system over here, so I get it. Um, so as I started to say, we are hiring a new assistant town clerk. As people know, Carla has uh, retired, and Fran has moved up into the acting town clerk. So we hire an assistant. She comes from the town of Manchester with 14-plus years of experience. She's certified. And she'll be starting with us on March 6th. So more to come. Um, I have some really good news. So if you can remember back in 2020, we got a LOSUP grant through Prague for Martin Road to uh, redo Martin Road yes. to the tune of almost $3 million. Um, we had to reapply for CROG with time gone by. We found some more issues with that road. And then, of course, the commodities going up. Uh, so we got notified on Tuesday, February 14th, 2023, that we would be receiving from CROG underneath that program uh, another $962,400. Um, that's during the design achievements. We had input from the residents, and they wanted a wider road with more safety for bikes and pedestrians on the side. It's also going to change uh, a couple of very expensive culverts and uh, it's going to realign the road a little bit. So that came to almost another uh, million dollars. So for the record, we, we're probably going to get close to $4 million to do that project that the taxpayers in Hebron don't have to directly pay for. Nice. Andy, could you, uh, I'm sorry, if it, could you just remind us the timing of that project in terms of how you see it progressing? Yes. Yeah, so now, now that that, number has come we'll we'll go into designs phase and they'll design that and then it'll probably be the following uh spring summer where the the actual work will get done so it'll it'll, it'll take time to design that this uh construction season and then we'll have to put that out to bid and probably get that ready for that following spring okay thank you you're more than welcome and then along uh the same kind of idea we were notified through our uh, consulting engineers, Nathan L. Jacobson and the state of Connecticut, um, we will be getting fully reimbursed for the old Colchester Road bridge culvert replacement down by the airline trail. So that'll save the taxpayers another $500,000 or a half a million that we would have had to be uh, our share. But we'll have to pay that. They're gonna reverse us as that project goes fully. So once again, that's another uh, a great shot in the arm for the town of Hebron. Um, so where we sat and interviewed firms for doing the facility study, we come up with uh, one firm that uh, was in budget and, and stuck out. So we met with them with the building committee this week. 
and we'll be bringing that to the board of selectmen at the next meeting to uh, uh, approve a contract with that firm. Been working on the Chatham Health budget for all the towns as well. Um, we'll continue to try to chisel that down a little bit. We did that again yesterday. Um, I have a meeting uh, in two weeks to finalize those numbers. Also, Region 8, we had a meeting today. That's the health insurance consortium. So right now we're at a 3%. Um, we've got another month to go before we can see if we can knock that number down a little bit more for the three entities, the schools and, and the town. At least that will affect our budget. Um, but some of our some of our claims, our higher claims are up. So we've got to be careful that we don't uh, lower that too much. But uh, so everything's pretty much relating to budget right now, this time of the year. And that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Hearing none, our next thing would be uh, getting into our old business, the tax abatement uh, yeah, application for 1416 Main Street. Yes, um, Board of Selectmen and Mr. Chairman, the last meeting uh, it was brought up and you guys uh, had a recommendation brought to you from the Economic Development Commission. And it, it was apparent to me that you guys were looking to uh, amend that recommendation in some form or fashion. So if you wanna move forward with that tonight, uh, this would be the time to do that. Okay, I'll read the resolution and then uh, invite Mr. Our, our town planner and open it up for discussion. Okay, the Town of Hebron Economic Development Commission received the Economic Development Incentive Program application from L and J Properties LLC, dated October eighteenth, two thousand twenty-two and revised January 13th, 2023. The Hebron Economic Development Commission reviewed the application for real property tax abatement with the applicant at its November 21st, 2022 meeting and subsequently approved a recommend, recommendation at its January 23rd, 2023 meeting. Whereas the proposed new construction of a post and beam mixed use building to be located at 16 Main Street in the Hebron Green Village District and is anticipated to cost the developer approximately $650,000 to construct and, whereas the Hebron assessor, assessor has estimated the assessed value of the proposed improvements to be $155,000 and at the 2021 grand list mill rate would generate a tax bill of uh, $4,913.50. The proposed tax abatement would have a value of $24,567.50 over the term of the agreement with the understanding that the assessed value and mill rate may be subject to change and will impact the full value of the abatement. And whereas the applicant is not delinquent in any taxes that are otherwise due to the town of Hebron, and whereas L and J Properties LLC have demonstrated a commitment to the development of high quality construction in the area of the town that warrants a heightened concern for the impacts uh, new development will have on the historic character of the National Register Historic District. Therefore, be it resolved that the Hebron Board of Selectmen accept the and amend the recommendation of the Hebron Economic Development Commission and authorize the town manager to enter into an agreement with l and Properties, LLC, fixing the assess assessment of the proposed improvements at 16 Main Street. That would be parcel number 70-32 to 0% of the assessed value for a period of five years and to take effect upon the first full fiscal year following the issuance of a certificate of occupancy by the building official. 
there. So, uh, uh, Matt. Okay. Uh, oh, there he is. Okay. How you doing? Oh, we caught you sleeping. <laughs> you hear me? Okay. Did you? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, um, you know, if you have any questions, I'm happy to respond. Uh, I was working with the applicant and the Economic Development Commission uh, in processing this application. Um, you know, on behalf of the Econo Economic Development Commission, um, the recommendation, um, you know, was was well thought through, um, and you know, we understand the the. Amendment that is being considered by the commission or by the board tonight. Um, however, you know, um, the, the quality of the project, um, the impact it will have on the historic district and the uh, main street frontage in a very visible location, uh, I think warrants, um, you know, the, the incentive that we're, we're promoting tonight. And, um, and uh, we look forward to encouraging the developer in this case to move forward with the project and get get so you know get doing so as soon as possible so um you know if, if again if there's any questions um i'm happy to uh i'm happy to help out okay any of my fellow board members i know we had we had all uh indicated that we were all seemingly comfortable with the five year plan uh, which is what he has brought back before us. So if, if everybody's ready to vote, uh, then so be it. Okay, hearing no comment, all in favor of the proposed resolution as read, uh, please signify by saying aye. Thank you, Matt, by the way. Uh, uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Okay, uh, Mark, I don't know if he's out there or not. Okay, uh, Peter? Uh, Peter Casper, aye. Gail? Can't hear you, sorry. You're still, yeah. Gail Wichman, aye. And myself, aye. Thank you again, Matt, for all that work. Oh, Mark, I see you, I see your forehead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I know I'm going out of order here, but I, I wanted to thank Matt for his work, obviously the Economic Development Commission as well. But you can clearly see there's a lot of work that's gone into this. And obviously I, I just speaking for myself, I appreciate your listening and, and sort of considering a different proposal. So I just wanted to thank you for all your efforts and um appreciate the thoroughness in which you have attacked this project. And uh, so I, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. Lucky to have you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the American Rescue Plan State and Local Recovery Funds Update. Uh, Andy? Okay, Mr. Chairman. So, as you know, we had a very busy meeting last meeting, so this got postponed to this meeting. So there's a couple projects that were approved by the attorney. Um, one, the American Legion, along with the Maple Fest is coming up. The uh, fees are removed between the Douglas Library and the American Legion. And there's an old uh, stockade fence. So in the flavor of cleaning up that whole area, like uh, um, the flower grows done along with the, the abatement we just uh, approved for the, uh, the people that own that. Um, we're suggesting that a fence get erected and, and replace that old ratty stockade fence. Um, that recently went to the historic properties where I don't think they had too much of an issue with that, but we still would need to go ahead from planning and zoning, but uh, we would like to secure the funding on that. Um, Hebron Center signage, Matt can speak to that as well, but we've been looking for some way signs through the um, uh, planning and zoning commission along with the the business is there. There's a lot of people that come from out of town and aren't sure where our public parking exists or some of these establishments are. So there's a bunch of 
surrounding neighboring towns that have these waste signs. So we're looking to, you know, do a do a decorative job and put something up that would help navigate the people through our town to certain areas along with the corner uh, out in front on 85 and 66 instead of just uh, randomly sticking signs up there all the time. We want a more permanent type uh, messaging board like you might see in East Hampton or Marlboro. So that's in that packet as well. Um, once again, the Veterans Memorial, that's on the corner of 66 and 85 in the center of our town. Behind all the monuments, the, the trees have gotten old and died and passed away, so we had to cut them down. So it's kind of bearing right behind the, uh, the tombstones. So uh, they're looking to put some decent looking arborvitaes behind there to kind of segregate the property in the back and make it look more appealing uh, when they have the uh, Memorial Day services there. And then code has a request in to help with their events on Juneteenth. And then uh, I'm proposing that we put the Hebrew Elementary School gym floor in the ARPA for two reasons. One, it will reduce the CAP request, but also if you guys approve that and it, he could get started sooner with uh, lining up a contractor and getting him started right away when school uh, finishes up this year. Okay. Um... I'll read the, the resolution and then we'll open it up for discussion. Uh, be it resolved that the Hebrew Board of Selectmen approved the ARPA projects uh, listed above, actually, uh, as or potentially as amended and authorize Andrew J. Turney, town manager, to take any actions necessary to acquire or implement the identified projects. Be it further resolved that it is understood that Amounts indicated are budget estimates for the amount of the final project may be more or less than indicated and that the town manager has the discretion to adjust the amount. If an individual project budget comes in more than 20 cent above the original budget amount, an update will be provided to the Board of Selectmen before commitment is made and the project is finalized. Be it further resolved that Authorization, authorization is given to Andrew J. Turney, town manager, by this resolution includes signing any purchase agreements, contracts, or any other documents necessary to finalize the projects. So does anybody have any discussion on any of these projects as listed? Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, please, Tiffany. I just have a question, um, I, you know, like I, I've gone through the documentation. I, I would also agree that putting a large expense like the school gym floor would be critical, especially if we can lower the CIP. I know we'll get to that, but I'm concerned that the CIP is awfully high considering how challenging the budget year is going to be. Um, I guess my question is in terms of the signage, $45,000 at Andy, is that standard low average price? It just seems a little high for what we're trying to do, but I don't know a lot about signage, so I want to ask. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. I think Matt, are you still with us, Matt? I'm here. Could you uh, speak to that question, please? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll take a crack at it. So, um, admittedly, these are going to be very um, conservative numbers, uh, uh, figures. We don't know exactly what they're going to cost. Um, Getting some numbers without a final design is very difficult. Um, we don't know exactly the extent of the project. What I'm asking the commission or the board tonight is really, um, uh, can I get the okay to move forward with um, considering a little further the design, the locations, you know, the appropriate locations across town. Um, you know, the the uh, the planning is uh, somewhat limited, but we reached out to sign professionals um got some concept plans just for you know just just for you to kind of think about what the project could look like and, and how it might be implemented um you know we would have to go probably work with a series of stakeholders to think through what ought to be the um, locations or the destinations that the town assets that are identified um you know in terms of style these are a couple these were actually prepared for michael leary uh, several years ago. So, you know, given the opportunity, um, there's a lot of investment. I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a fair amount of investment going into the Hebron Green area. 
um, I think we have um, kind of the duty and, and the opportunity to uh, complement some of those improvements and to, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, use this as an economic development initiative as well and kind of kind of push the agenda a little bit. So, you know, I think these are very conservative figures. Um, there's a fair amount of planning that's going to have to go into this. I'm going to have to review um, these, this project with the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission as well. I'll probably be back in front of you with some more final designs. Historic Properties Commission is probably going to be involved in this project. Um, but, I, you know, to start, this is really just to get the okay to move forward. Okay, Sharon? thank you. Oh, sorry, Tiffany. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pete. Would uh, would it be appropriate then, Matt, um, if we had just thinking of Tiffany's comments, if we uh, think of this as two two steps? So would it be, uh, and if it's not reasonable, tell me if it would be reasonable to agree to move forward with uh, eight thousand dollars for the design phase, and then add a uh, a second item that is approved but is a TBD because it just seems like we have. You know, we want to, you want to move forward, but we have a lot of unknowns on the bigger element of the project. Could we think about this in two steps? So we support you now with some funds there, but you come back with some more detail uh, and then we can expand that uh, as we move forward. Would that be appropriate or not? And if it's not, that's okay. I'm just, just an idea. I think it's fair, especially as it applies to the wayfinding signage program. The event sign is a little bit more cut and dry. I mean, the intent would be to locate it at the intersection of 66 and 85 where it's appropriate. Um, and, you know, again, that's, that's a conservative figure. So, um, I think even with the final design, which is probably not going to be too dissimilar from what's presented, um, you know, you'll see that number come down a little bit, but in terms of the wayfinding, there's a fair amount more work that goes in. So, yeah, if there was a 2 step process, I wouldn't be opposed to that. How does the rest of the board feel? I think I'd be more comfortable with that to start. Sorry, Mr. chair. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, and then, so I would like to know how do we adjust the the numbers? Um, well, the Hebron Center signage design, right, would be then a dollar amount of let's just say that is ten thousand dollars. I see twenty five hundred and five thousand. If ten thousand dollars gave you the wiggle room to move forward with the, some of that work. Uh, yes, I think um, eight to ten would be appropriate for the design work. So we um, just add the word design, Mr. Chairman. Maybe add ten thousand, and then add a line that says the original line that's here that is then a line item and it's approved and it's a TBD item for just us to. And I'm also thinking just in. I mean, we have fifteen minutes for this whole section of the agenda, so I'm also thinking that you know maybe this allows us to keep moving on this, especially since Tiffany uh, made some good points yep. about us and, and Matt as well. Okay. Um, so we want to reduce that to $10,000 um, for design. Well, I would just add, I would add TBD to that because that's the, the, the broad category and just maybe add a line that says the same. Um, I'm sorry, what does it say exactly? I apologize. I'm, I didn't print out the agenda. I just want the word design in there as a, line item and then the other line item could just be tbd i can't see what the line item is so i'm sorry oh here it is okay so hebron center signage is tbd and then hebron center signage design is approved for ten thousand dollars that would be sort of the suggestion anyway that I'm, if that makes sense mr chairman okay and then i had a question and i'm a little Curious with the code support for the Juneteenth event, the four the four thousand uh, dollars. I just they were talking about again. They're talking about signage, um, you know. Uh, uh, and I forgot just what how it was worded. I can find it in here, um, but I want to make sure that a it's not conflicting with uh, signage that we're looking at being done on the town wide uh, level and the verbiage so i think you know the two need to kind of work together uh you know and again with you know potentially planning and zoning unless they're talking all portable signs 
it, it doesn't say. So I'm just kind of a little curious as to what they're looking at for the $4,000. Um, Andy, do you want me to take that? I would sure. hope that you would take that, Donna. Okay, thank you. We did ask them that specific question. The $4,000 is specifically for the Juneteenth event. Last year, I believe they said their budget for Juneteenth was around $8,000, and they wanted to try to add more, more programs programming, more entertainment, and more music, and other uh, other things to that event. So they said anything we could give them um, would be appreciated. And I think we put a number of 4,000, but it's specifically for Juneteenth. It's not the sign um, okay. out of their Okay, as, as I say, I'm looking at that whole <clears throat> list of things, and I just, I just try to get my hand around, or my head around what they're actually looking for. You know, it's specifically for the Juneteenth event. Okay. Okay. Thanks, I, I, if I may, just on the topic, yes, there's a little bit, you know, maybe it's not a huge deal, but I, I think of uh, ARPA funds as uh, a reflection of the, the community and what we're trying to do for the entire community. So I'm a little hesitant to have this be code request. Um, to me, um, this is the town uh, supporting Ju Juneteenth um, Goodwit, but we have a lot of wonderful charities in, that are spearheaded by a lot of wonderful volunteers in our community. And this would be you know, multiple requests from code for ARPA is, you know, is fine. It's just that I see this as a community supported event, not, not a response to code specifically, because um, Juneteenth is a celebration for our community, not a code celebration. So it's semantics and it's probably a little, but I just, I sort of view all this in from the lens of the community. Um, and so I, I had a little trouble with how this was titled. I appreciate the suggestion and, and, and I think of it more along the lines of our, this is a community decision more so than a code decision. So I, I just some, wanted to put that, and I, I love what code's doing. This isn't a criticism. It's just trying to keep thinking about this from the lens of ARPA as reflective of the, the entire community. Um, so it's just a, maybe more of a commentary than anything else that, but that was distracting to me that um, the way it was titled. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so the resolution uh, be it resolved that the Hebrew Board of Selectmen approved the ARPA fund projects listed as amended, which would be, uh, the Heber Center signage to be determined $10,000 for a design uh, um, and authorize Andrew J. Tierney, town manager, to take any action necessary to acquire or implement the identified projects. Does, is that proper? Yes, no? I think so. Okay, just making sure. Uh, is that will that work for you, Matt? Okay. Uh, okay. Hearing the proposed resolution as amended, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Tiffany. Tiffany Keeley, aye. Uh, I don't know if we have Mark yet. Uh, Peter. Hugh Casper, aye. Gail. Gail Richmond, I. And myself, I. Okay. Uh, yeah, Tiffany, um, just as a reiteration, a lot of, the, literally for years now, our, our CIP has been around that, um, papers aren't going to stay anymore, have been up and around that $1 million mark, 980000 Um if you look back, and Andy could be far more instrumental, or Donna, uh, or actually even Mel, uh, CIP was supposed to be growing by percentages as the years progress, which uh, sadly, because of the economic 
climate that that we as a town and, and a state have been in hasn't happened uh, so it's you know technically we should be even having a larger cip uh budget than we do or that that's being presented uh the other thing is by doing the school thing now uh quite literally they wouldn't be able to act on it until actually july 1st now they can actually act on this request immediately you know they can they can go out and 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 you know start the bid process and and you know if we get really lucky they may be able to get somebody in to start you know actually on july 1st uh or or whenever school's out it does take away a, a while i know i was involved with seg up equipment in lebanon and it usually takes them weeks by the time they get the floors sanded and then all the coats of poly and it's and then the lines it's a lot of work uh, you don't realize that it's a lot of work to do a floor um, so I, I appreciate that mr chairman i just think that um we know that there are budgets that are coming in that have um a lot of asks and a lot of percentage increases and so i think we all have to look at everything holistically was mainly my yeah. point yep well i agree so thank you i agree uh okay um 7c andy did you uh i guess we got a new page on this yeah so i didn't know that mr telemary was gonna um withdraw so what we had done is he had submitted his name earlier uh mrs latanzi had submitted her name as uh, people at large i got an email from mark former selectman mark stewart i got an email from mal lector from the board of finance slash building committee and the suggestion to the board of selectmen was to have like a five member panel to work directly with dka the firm that we approved at the last meeting to come up with uh, questions for the survey to come back to the whole board of selectmen for approval. So that was a quick stab at it. Like I said, I didn't solicit anybody. These are people that uh, had put their names forward. I think we'll have to apparently find somebody else now that uh, Mr. Pellamary does not wanna uh, serve in that capacity. So that's up to the board of selectmen. If, if you agree to that formula, pick somebody from the board that would be willing to serve in that and they will not have to look for someone else, uh, a citizen at large perhaps. Okay, um, I know uh, I, Peter one time had act had, had voiced a, an interest. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be on it. If, I'm happy to be on it, Mr. Chairman. And, you know, obviously, I'm interested in others' uh, opinions as well. But um, I'm happy to continue to extend myself to this uh, committee if if the board so chooses. I think I really think we need to move forward with this, uh, and and you know every every day every week we delay it, it just pushes it out uh a little bit um you know five i know uh in talking with pete he was talking about seven but you know you want to pete yeah i mean does anyone else want to wrestle me for it because i you know i've just you know i've raised my hand but uh, i don't know if mark's having a tough time communicating there i know gail if you wanted to it doesn't have to be me Neither you are welcome to it <laughs> And, and I just want to make, just make sure I, I see Ann still on there. I was just kidding the end of the city. You needed to stay on for the meeting. I mean, it's, it's a long meeting, so you're welcome to join to stay, but I see you're still with us. And, uh, I was just kidding to suggest that you needed to stay, on. Uh, but you're welcome. Of course. Um, so what I would, I would recommend is, or at least think about is I would, I, I would like to, if the board agrees, um, meet with the firm and get a better understanding of the timeline, the expectation, and what kind of commitment the, um, the public would, and since, since we have another person that we need to fill the spot, that um, they would be uh, be up against. Because I don't want anyone to, to volunteer and then realize it's more of a commitment than they had thought. And so uh, if, the, if the board's okay, I would like to get some preliminary, maybe through Andy, some preliminary information. Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Hey, please do. So in talking to the firm, you know, I'm trying to stay out of this as much as I can. What the last conversation I had was that you guys approved his services. 
what I was going to do is try to get you to approve some sort of committee or at least some of the people tonight and then put him in touch with those people and he would do just that, what Peter's okay. talking about. Give him, you know, some of just sort of kick off. Uh, so why don't we? Uh, yeah. And I also noticed that um, Mr. Chartel is on the screen here. I'm not sure if that's something he'd be willing to serve on because he lives right across the street. And by no means am I trying to solicit him, but now that Mr. Tullamary stepped step back. I'm not sure if that's something he'd be interested in. <clears throat> Is, okay. I'll put it out there real quick. Uh, yes. Hi, Dan. Is it all right if I speak? Yes, please. Um, thank you, uh, Andy, for that, uh, that suggestion and that recommendation. But to be quite honest with you, I think I'm too close to this whole situation and the low and um, to, to be fair and unbalanced. Um, but I, I do appreciate you considering me, um, but I, I do think that uh, I'm too close to the, the whole problem or issue at hand here to, to be as objective as I should be. Understood. Uh, another so individual. Uh, open and just move forward to in, in your... <clears throat> Oh, Dan, we need to move this forward. So, yes. Uh, then, in the next week or so, maybe someone else will step up that um, wants to provide their perspective, and so we can leave that spot to be determined. But uh, maybe have it filled by the next uh, in the next two weeks. But otherwise, move forward. So, add my name in, remove Mr. Tulmeri's name, uh, leave that blank line under that community member, and then I propose we uh, move the question. Okay, I agree. I, I completely agree. Uh, move the Hebrew Board of Selectmen appoint a committee to work with DKA on the community survey for the Public Works Building Project to consist of five members as follows. Uh, Peter Casper, Board of Selectmen, Mel Lecter, Public Building Committee, Board of Finance, uh, Andrea Letanzi, Community Member, Mark Stewart, Community Member, and the uh, third community member to be named at a later date. Uh, I know somebody who's kind of been a little involved, maybe uh, Terry McManus. I don't know if he would be interested. Um, yeah. Not sure if I can get that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't put Terry on a spot. Give him at least a couple of minutes. He can reach out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not, I'm not going to the meetings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be can more you, than hear me. Okay. I'm sorry. Dan, can, can you hear, you hear me? me? Yes, sir. I, yes. Dan, you can hear me now. Oh, hold on. A second. Uh, hi, Mark. Yes. yes. All right. I've been, I've been trying for an hour to get through. Uh, I've heard everything everybody said, and I would have voted yes with all of you. So if you could hear me now, I guess I'm with you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have Terry on, I believe. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can. As the old line says, good. Um, I'd be more than happy to help out on this. Okay. Thank you. Is everybody satisfied with, with the five names? Yes, thank you, Terry, for willing to step up. We appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then it would yes. be uh, Terry McManus as our uh, third community member. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the five members as listed, please signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Yay, he is there. Uh, <laughs> Peter? What you get for living in Maine? Peter Casper, aye. <laughs> Uh, Gail? Hey, I'm, I'm sitting in the Hebron Fire Department. I came no. here to try to get the thing to work. <laughs> uh, come to my come to my house. We have good reception uh, over here this side of town. Uh, uh, well, thanks for the offer. I'm already here, and I'm not going to change anything right now because it's working. <laughs> uh, Gail? And Gail Richmond, I. And myself, I. Thank you. Uh, our next would be any other old business, I believe. Any other old business? 
Hearing none, moving on to our new business. Uh, this would be transfer of land at Abbey Drive, and I'm not sure if it's going to be Andy or Matt. I'll kick it off in trying to move this along. So attaches a memo from our town planner, Matt Bordeaux, uh, regarding a transfer of land at Abbey Drive, and Matt is in attendance, and he will explain it. Uh, it's pretty cut and dry, so hopefully Matt will give you the abbreviated version of why this is in the best interest of the town and why it's no longer needed. Yeah, well, putting the pressure on, so I'll do my best. Um, there exists a paper road or an access strip uh, that the town owns between 35 and 29 Abbey Drive. Um, this was uh, designed and intended to provide access to over 100 acres of undeveloped land to the north of um, the two parcels. Um, this often happens when the Planning and Zoning Commission approves new subdivisions that are adjacent to undeveloped property. So there's future development potential. Um, the state actually bought the land to the north, so that future development potential no longer exists. And therefore, we're left with a town owned piece of property um, that really serves no purpose and, in fact, could potentially be considered a liability. Um, the Resident at 35, resident and owner of the property, um, reached out to the town manager and I about the possibility of acquiring that property. When I took a closer look at it, um, while I, I do agree that it makes sense that it be conveyed to the property owner, um, I noticed that at 29 Abbey Drive, there is what may be a slight uh, encroachment. Um, and in order to avoid any neighbor disputes in the future, um, and to kind of make an even split, I thought the common sense approach would be to split the property down the middle. It's a 50 foot wide strip, provide 25 to either side and square up the property lines. Um, the town acquired this for a dollar. I think it was simply conveyed, you know, in the past. Um, so there's nothing the town stands to lose. Um, you know, there will be a nominal increase in tax revenue, um, based on the expansion of the properties on either side. Uh, essentially, the request tonight is for the commit or for the board's direction. Should I move forward with this? I would have some mapping prepared, some legal descriptions prepared, um, and uh, you know the uh, uh, ancillary uh, legal requirements that are due for uh, an action like this. And ultimately, I would follow up with the um, 824 mandatory referral with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And an action like this would require a special town meeting, which, you know, ideally we couple with something else comparable. Um, but that's the, um, that's the ask. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Open it up for discussion. Or actually, I read the motion. Move the Heber Board of Selectmen approve the transfer of land at Abbey Drive as presented and refer the, to a future special town meeting at a date to be determined. Uh, Anybody have any comments? Chairman, I moved the question. I yeah. moved the question as well. I think we just keep oh, I was gonna say it, it just makes sense. Uh and it turns it into taxable property and it removes the liability off of our shoulders. So it's a win-win all the way around the block. Um uh, so uh hearing Matt's uh discussion on this, all in favor? Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Gail? She said uh, aye. She's on mute. Uh, I'm assuming it's an aye. Sorry about that. Yes, it is an aye. <laughs> and myself, aye. Motion passes. Our next would be the awarding of the bid for the Douglas Library roof replacement project. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this gives me great pleasure to finally introduce this item on the agenda. It's been many, many long conversations and engagements. So this would be award the bid for the Douglas Library roof replacement project. The town received recently conducted an RFP for the Douglas Library roof replacement and received one proposal from young developers. The public building committee conducted a post bid review meeting with young developers and are recommending award of the bid, which is within the budget. Uh, please see attached uh, for more details. And then there's a proposed motion, but uh, 
they've met with them. Uh, their bid was all in, and I think uh, they can do the job, and I'm happy that we can maybe move this forward finally. Okay, I'll read the motion, then open it up. Move the Haber Board of Selectmen award the bid for the Douglas Library Roof Replacement Project to Young Developers, LLC of Hamden, Connecticut, in the amount of $320,900. Uh, that's the base bid of $274,900 plus alternate one home assault replacement at $39,500 and alternate two hand nail $6,500 and authorize Andrew J. Tierney, town manager, to sign all necessary documents and contracts related to this work. Uh, does anybody have any questions or whatever? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Uh, Gail? Gail Wichman, aye. And myself, aye. Uh, Dan? Yes. And Mel Eichter here. A comment yes. I wanted to make before you voted, but if I sorry. take a minute here. Um, you're, you're all aware that the library, that Kevin uh, worked hard to get a grant for 200, and, and it was uh, uh, approved at $232,000. Uh, we found out at the last minute, thanks to uh, Donna Lanz's sharp eyes, that the, uh, the state will only cover 50%. Uh, there's good news and bad news here. Uh, so we're not going to get because of the total cost being three hundred and twenty dollars, three hundred twenty thousand. The maximum we can get is one hundred and sixty thousand. What it did allow us to do, uh, which is better off for the town in the in, in the long run, is we were able to replace the the homosote, the original one inch homosote decking that's on the roof. Uh, part of the issue with our uh, the waffling of the shingles that are there. So uh, the the fact our, our original projection without replacing the homosote is it was going to be approximately and Richard, if you have the right number, the exact number, it was going to be approximately three hundred and thirty thousand dollars was the estimate of our uh, uh, our consultant um, because it came in so low and because we do have this the grant dollars that are going to cover half of everything. Uh, we felt it was better uh, to move forward with those two alternates. And so therefore, uh, and the only reason I'm telling you this is you're not going to see $232,000 in grant monies, but by the same token, you're not going to see a final bill for the taxpayers of over 300,000. So, I mean, if you have any other questions, we'd be glad to to address it, um, I do want to say thank you for your support, and uh, we look forward to getting this done for the town. Thank you. Did they state when they would have a start date? It will. Uh, it, you, the the documents are all prepared to go out, uh, so the bid will go out. We anticipate it'll be it'll go out for about a period of two to three weeks. Uh, it'll come back. It'll get uh, approved. It'll get opened, read, and approved, uh, and then it'll come back to you for final. I'm sorry, I take that back. Yes, no, it'll come back to you for the final approval of the construction phase. Uh, I believe, Mr. Uh, Town Manager, the uh, board of does the board of selectmen have to approve the the contract with the uh, yeah. Yep. So once the bid comes back, it'll uh, uh, and it's vetted by the consultant and approved by the the building committee. It'll come back to you for final approval. They uh, they said they can do it in um, so it'll be done before the uh, they prefer to do it and get it done before the summertime uh, because they have commitments uh, with larger roofing jobs. You know. At, public buildings like schools. So they're as motivated to get it done as we are. And uh, I won't speak for Kevin directly, 
but we spoke with the uh, library committee the other night. Uh, Gail was in attendance and uh, Kevin was comfortable with, with everything that he heard. He did attend the, uh, the post bid meeting. Okay. Uh, Dan, it's Richard Steiner. Uh, to yes, answer sir. your question, when we had our DSCOPE meeting with young developers and Kevin Sullivan was in attendance, uh, the agree, agreed and forecasted start date was somewhere between the third week or fourth week of, uh, of March, right after Maple Fest. Obviously, everything is weather dependent, but they're looking and looking to start uh, definitely this spring with a goal of being done um, by by midsummer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Our next would be our uh, CIP budget review. Yes, thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> if I may. Yes, please. Okay. So before you tonight under item 8C is the fiscal year 2023-24 CIP budget review. Capital improvement plan attached, prescribes the board selectment, review the town manager's CIP budget recommendation by February 15th and finalize the CIP budget and five-year plan by March 1st for inclusion in the upcoming fiscal year budget. Attached is a proposed CIP five-year plan, uh, recommendation for funding sources, and a proposal for the fiscal year 2023-24 CIP budget. So with that being said, the next page, we can come back to that proposed motion if we after we go through the items, I would think. So the next page shows what I have reduced it down to. So to answer or, or try to um, give some insight to Tiffany's question, the original requests from the departments were three million, were approximately three million dollars. Um, uh, and the page behind that will show that the town manager's recommendation, I, I, I use the word whittled, I whittled it down to the 987,647. Um, like your comments were right, Dan, historically we, we come in around that that number, but normally we were supposed to be, when this was set up, we don't have a sinking fund. So this was supposed to be 5% of the overall town budget and we've never gotten there. So what we do is we do the best we can and thank God for ARPA, but um, you know, there's some important things in here that the costs, the inflation, if anybody's done anything in their homes or, or, or bought equipment is just, just astronomical, the increases. Um, so I cut the roads way back from the original request. So that came in at 329.30. Um, there's engineering design for the public works facility. We've been asked if we were to move forward with that project, where would that money come from to finalize that? So I want to put that as an ear, earmark in this, this area, I think is appropriate where it should be. Uh, there's a replacement of truck 52. That's an older truck. It's a four wheel drive mid-size uh, dump truck that does the lake area. Um, that's a pretty important piece and it's seen its life expectancy. Um, and then this is to put some seed money in to start replacing the rescue pumper. We're gonna look at alternative funding sources, possibly grants, uh, possibly some, some financing options, uh, but we need to have some seed money in order to even do that. Uh, that's three or four years out anyways. And then um, this is the Jones Street culvert replacement for 94761 What that is, is we, we have an application in through CROG again for a different, different grant. And if we were to get that grant, this would be our portion to offset that. That grant itself is, is around a million dollars. Um, so our portion to Hebron to do that, that one culvert at that time would be that 94761 so what Excuse that... me, Andy, can I interrupt? I'm sorry. Um, yes. Andy, we had replaced the sheets today. So that okay, um, Jones Street culvert replacement is 55,000. Kevin Kelly <laughs> had indicated we could split that over two years. Yeah, okay, you're right, we took one out. Okay, sorry about that, I'm reading off the old sheet. So there's the new sheet. It's even going the right way, thank you, Donna for the grand total, which is up on the screen of 947,886. And then if you wanna look at the page behind that, 
you can see where the requests came in from. Uh, it says department requests up in the top 2324, and then you'll see what the town manager is recommending. And that should give you a little bit more insight of how much that I reduced it to try to get it to fit in and lower this budget as much as I think is possible. My one question I have right now, we're carrying 55,000 for that culvert. What happens if we do not get the grant or, uh, I mean, the culvert great, needs great to be question. done, correct? Well, it does, but if we don't get the grant, we're, we're probably not gonna do the culvert right away. Okay. So you're, that's a good question, but we, we're anticipating getting that. And if we don't have it in there and get it, we're, you know, it's a catch 22. So we, we took one out, we, we reduced it down to that one. And if we get it, we'll be in line with able to pay to do that. But if you're right, if we don't get the grant, then we could put that off. Okay. With the culvert will be able to survive another year before yep. it becomes yep. critical or okay yeah you just don't want to go put a new road over an old culvert so if we don't get the money to do the road we're not in a rush to do the culvert it will need to be done at some point in time but we could push that off but i'd rather doing this a long time this is this is pretty much how you do it you put it in there and hope you get it if you don't the money goes back to the town we don't we don't take it yeah well exactly but uh and then my other question is with the increase in asphalt products, how how is this going to uh, affect the amount of roads that we try to do every year? I know we we try to do a certain amount of roads. I don't remember what that number is. Uh, how is that going to affect this? Any idea? Well, it's going to hurt a little bit, but what we're trying to do to make up for that is what I discussed earlier in the town manager's report. We're getting four million dollars to go out and do Martin Road that we're not gonna have to fund. They're getting $500,000 fully reimbursement on the bridge on Old Colchester Road. So those are the kind of offsets we're giving back to the town to give us more money to do just straight paving or resurfacing of our roads now. So that's how we're trying to, to make that up, Dan. Okay. And then, and then if we were to get this other million dollar budget uh, grant for Jones Street, that, that would also uh, help in uh, achieving that goal. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, the motion move the Heber, excuse me, move that in accordance with the town of Heber capital improvement plan policy. The Heber Board of Selectmen approved a final draft of the recommended projects for the fiscal year 2023, 2024 CIP budget and the five year plan as presented uh, totaling uh, and actually, that would be $947,886 for inclusion into the town manager's fiscal year 2023-2024 budget recommendation. Hearing the motion, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Uh, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Uh, Gail? Gail Richman, aye. And myself, aye. Thank you. Our next would be the uh, fiscal 2023-2024 uh, budget uh, schedule. I don't know if anybody has any problems with any of those dates. Um, I think Donna's trying to catch up. Has everybody reviewed those dates? Any Any kind of issues or anything? I reviewed okay. them, Dan, uh, and it, it looks like the same kind of schedule that we do every year. Yes. Yep. 
Uh, move the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve the fiscal year 2023-2024 uh, budget review schedule as presented. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Excuse me. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Yale? Yale Wichman, aye. And myself, aye. And I'll put that over here so I can pin it on my forehead. Uh, our next thing would be the ARPA Rural Roads Grant application. Andy? Yes, if I, if I may. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Once again, very proud to have this in front of you today. So a resident trooper, uh, this had sunsetted, but uh, he went back and uh, a lot of towns didn't put in for this. So we we're eligible to put it in. We got it in right away. And attached is a completed grant application for the state of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, which is state police. Uh, fiscal year 2002 ARPA Rural Roads Grant. This grant request is for $50,000 with no town match required. The grant would provide increased enforcement to extra patrol hours uh, targeting problem areas during high incident times on evenings and weekends. So this is uh, going to give us a good shot in the arm to have uh, more police uh, presence out on our roads here in Hebron. So I think this is a win-win for us and the community. Okay. Uh, we'll all read the motion. We'll open it up for discussion. Uh, move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve submission of the application for the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, uh, Connecticut, fiscal year 2022. Is that correct? Or should that be 2023? Whatever, 2022 ARPA Rural Roads Grant in the amount of a $50,000 and authorize Andrew J. Tierney, town manager, to sign any necessary grant documents. Uh, any discussion? So what they, what they, what, Mr. Chairman, if I may, just to answer your, your skepticism yes, there, they, they did extend it. So you'll see the application due date was November 1st, 2022, but they extended it, but that's still the date of this. Uh, okay. This grant. So that's why it read, reads that way. Okay. See, I do pay attention when I read sometimes. Uh, okay. Hearing the motion, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Peter? Hugh Casper, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Gail? Gail Wichman, aye. And myself, aye. Next is... Oh, wow. Draft agenda. Again, uh, anybody that has anything to add on to it or, or whatever, please get it into the town manager's office. Um, I don't, uh, just taking a look. The building project, I think that's, that's it. Um, okay. We'll be adding to the approval of that firm to do the facility study to this agenda. Yes, I was going to say, I, I yes. Okay, uh, our next item would then be our consent agenda. And these are items to be considered routine in nature, which may the board may need to discuss individually and may be voted on as a group. Any board member who wishes to discuss a particular item in this section may request the chair to remove it for later discussion, a separate vote if necessary. So what we have are the approval of minutes. And I think uh, I have an amendment or, or, or adjustment on the, um, I wanna say it's the January 19th minutes. And I don't know if Gail has anything or not, uh, or anybody else. No, okay. The only thing I would like to see would be uh, the January 19th, 2023, page three of six, uh, the code request, the impl uh, implicit bias training. I just would like to add that the, uh, D. Larson motioned and uh, the board of the board of selectmen approved. Everything else is stating who made the motion. That one is the only one that did not. 
So I just would like to get that amendment in there. Uh, Gail, I think you had some things that you had seen. Yes, and I don't have those notes with me now, so I I can't do it. Okay. But I know I did. Um, okay. Did anybody else have anything else on? Well, if she has notes, do we do we have to approve them tonight? No. Nope. We'll just table it. I don't want to we'll miss table that one. Let's get them. Let's, I would suggest that they're accurate. So if Gail's picked up something, we can, we can yep. do it the next Gail, is that okay? Works for me. Yeah. So, that sounds good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's table it. Okay. Uh, so we'll make, uh, move that the Hebron Board of Selectmen approve the following consent agenda, agenda items of the uh, minutes of the January 24th special joint meeting and the February 2nd regular meeting and that we hold for um, amendments, the January 19th, 2023 regular meeting and we approve the tax refunds as listed. That covers us, I think. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Tiffany? Tiffany Teeley, aye. Uh, Peter? Peter Casper, aye. Mark? Mark Rivera, aye. Uh, Gail? Gail Richmond, aye. And myself, aye. Okay. Um, next would be our liaison reports. Do we have any liaison reports? I have one quick one. Okay. And I do also. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Mark. So, so after a, a lot of work and planning, um, some of the ARPA funds for active shooter have uh, been allocated and we're putting stop the bleed kits and all the AEDs in the high school and an advanced stop the bleed kit in every police car. And um, even the Lions chipped in to uh, get some additional ones. And when we're done with that, we're going to move on and address doing the same thing in the elementary schools. So that's all I have to report on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Gail? Okay, for the uh, Douglas Library, um, the, the, there are now new museum passes available. Those are paid for by the Friends of the Library, and they now will include the New Britain Youth Museum, they will include the Connecticut Trolley Museum, and the Springfield Museums up in Massachusetts. A Medicare information session will be Wednesday, February 22nd at 2 p.m. and again at 6 p.m. Um, now, the uh, for the Senior Center, They've been um, helping seniors get acquainted with using the um, their technology. Mandy um, from the, uh, the Senior Center has been helping the sessions. And um, Kevin from the library will join on February 28th to put another pair of hands in. The Department of Aging and Disability and the Tech Art Project are taking place now. And Sharon is working on the winter heating assistance and AARP every year does a tax program and that is currently being held in the in the senior center. So please call for an appointment at 860-228-1700. And that's it, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tiffany? Just um, a couple of quick dates from the Green Committee. Um, so they've set some dates in April for some of their events. April 22nd will be the Earth Day celebration. April 23rd, the Swap Shack will open for a new season. And on April 29th, they will host a spring shred event. And that's to make up for November's event, which um, they had to cancel due to that uh, windstorm that we had come through. And just on the open space front, I believe the town has um, the open space committee's request for funding. And there was a lot of discussion on their presentation um, to the board 
coming up shortly. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Peter? Uh, the most recent Board of Finance meeting, of just a couple of things that I noted. Um, the audit is being finalized, might be finalized by now. There was an extension needed and it was targeting for mid-February, so that may be done by now. So there was an update on that. Um, some <clears throat> budget discussions and one of the things that I just wanted to bring to the board's attention, I don't know if we can do anything about it, but it was just interesting. Uh, if you remember the, um, the uh, that case where we had all those dogs that needed animals that yeah. needed to be rescued. And my notes say that we have $30,000 of vet costs that can't be recovered. And so I'm just sort of wondering, and it just, uh, now we can't cover it here, and it's not our, maybe in our purview, but you know, what I just, my question is, what do we, um, and it's a rhetorical one, or is there anything else we can do to sort of find homes and in, in for these animals and, and try not to continue to incur these ex these unrecoverable expenses? Um, the, the, the woman that, um, is responsible ultimately it's at least initially in my notes uh i see here that there's no real likelihood of recovering any of those expenses from her in terms of suing her and all that the assets just aren't there so it looks like the town will continue to have to absorb those expenses so that was just i thought it's something the board might be interested in hearing about uh and following and um there was some discussion about a potential charter revision or an interest an interest in increasing the board of finances threshold for special appropriation so that was a Good discussion, so more to follow on that. That's it, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Andy, I don't know if you have anything for us. Just quickly, we're moving forward with that sewer project that's uh, slated to start wrapping up, believe it or not. We've been working on it for a while, but it's starting to come to a close. They're getting close. Nice. Uh, um, do you have, I was going to say, do you have anything on the uh, the animal situation, the cost, the, the dollars on that? Um, yeah, so unfortunately, you know, Peter's right. So we, we continue to monitor that. We're still housing dogs. A lot of the municipalities are still housing our dogs. Um, the judge has made a ruling in the case, but she's claiming that she wants her own personal dogs back. And of course, her own personal dogs number turned out to be 24 of them. So it's holding us up adopting out these dogs and we still have some municipalities that aren't charging us a dime they're just being good neighbors but it's starting to wear thin so we're, we're talking to the state every week and we're going to try to re recoup some of that cost from the state once we know you know the case is over um and then i can talk to the town attorney and see if there's something we can litigate but we continue to work on that weekly thank you uh, anything with Chatham Health or anything on that front? No, uh, we lost our head sanitarian, so we're going to be looking. Not not us, though. The the chief sanitarian for Chatham Health uh, has has uh, stepped down. He's leaving the profession. He's going to work for um, the water sewer facilities in the town he lives in. So we're going to be going out looking for another chief uh, sanitarian. So right now we've just been in budget mode and um, gearing up for another year. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I have nothing. So, uh, with that, we'll open it up for public comment again, and then we will go into executive session for the uh, town manager evaluation. So, do we have anybody for public comment? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Ask Donna to do her magic, and then we'll go into our executive session. <laughs>